If it's okay with you, I thought it was about time we had another chat. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago, I put up a video where we talked about iOS versus Android? Not which was better, but why you chose the device that you chose. And the great thing was you really got behind that video. You understood what I was trying to achieve with that video, so much so that we had over 200 comments on that video alone. I replied to each and every one of them. I learned loads about Android and a lot about iOS as well. And it was fascinating just to pull back the covers and have a proper grown-up discussion about what it is that makes you choose your phone. And leading on from that is the thought behind today's video. What is it that makes you decide to change phone? And do you think phones have just got a little bit bloated and confused, possibly? I think the idea for this video started a couple of weeks ago, just after I watched uh, the Samsung Unpacked event. I'm a geek, obviously I watch those events, and at the end of the event, because I run this channel, I immediately put the S24 Ultra into my shopping basket. But you know what? I have never checked out. It's still sitting there, and I'll tell you why a little bit later on. I began thinking then about what I use my phone for on a, on a daily basis. When we watch these events, it's all well and good. They are events. They're marketing events. Look, I run a company, I mean, a little bit smaller than them, but I run a company. I like to make money. And that's what those events are geared up to, to convince us to spend money on the new device. But at the moment, it seems to me that they're really trying to get us to spend money on features and apps and AI wonderful AI gizmos that they can do on those phones. And that's why I wondered what it is that makes you decide it's time to change phone. So I sat and thought about what I use my phone for, and it's actually fairly boring, mundane stuff. Since I nearly got scammed last year, I nearly do all of my banking on device. I use Google Authenticator. Most of the time when I'm checking my YouTube studio stats, I check that on the phone for some reason. And Apple Music, if I'm away from the studio or the office at home iMessage, 50-50, sometimes it's on the phone, but if I'm at home or here in the studio, I'll generally, uh, generally reply to iMessage from the Mac. Social media, yeah, I look at Instagram during the day, Twitter, a little bit of WhatsApp and Telegram, that's kind of it, and Apple Pay. Apple Pay is one of the best apps ever. I can't remember the last time I left home with a debit card. I absolutely love it. And of course, we use our cameras as well, but we only, we only kind of use our cameras. Just before I carry on, I just want to say thank you. You've been brilliant recently in helping this channel grow. The best way to help a channel of my size or of any size grow is by subscribing. By subscribing, YouTube throws the video out in front of more people and I hopefully pick up new subs. My goal at the moment is to get to 5,000 subs. I'd love to get there by the end of February. And with your help and if I carry on making content that you enjoy and get involved with, Maybe we can do that together. Don't forget also to turn on notifications. I do generally put some posts on the community page during the week as well, so you'll be the first to see those. And when I put a video up, which is generally once a week, I'm posting on a, a Friday at the moment. And if you're really enjoying the videos, go and take a look at the channel, see if there's videos there that you like. If you're really enjoying them, a super thanks would be fantastic. Obviously, these tech channels aren't cheap to run. So if you haven't subscribed and you're brand new to the channel, lovely to have you along and uh, any way you can help me out just to let this channel grow would be fantastic. So getting back to the phones and to these features, as I say, I'm not singling out Samsung, that's just because it's the most recent event. The same is true of Google and certainly of Apple. If I go back to WWDC of last year, there was uh, live voicemail, there was reactions, there was stickers. Do you remember, I think it was an iOS 16, when you could long press an image, it would separate from the background, you could drop it into an iMessage? I totally forgot about it. I think I used it once. Have you ever used it? And that's kind of the point that I'm making. There, there was changes to CarPlay last year. Do you remember what it was? In iOS 17, you've now got SharePlay. Have you ever used it? Nope, me neither. Check-in, I used check-in once. Would you know where to find check-in? I used check-in once and the only time I used it, I think it half scared the person I was sending it to to death think I'd been in an RTA. It's a one-off thing. I've never, ever used it since. The fanfare that came out around emergency SOS, apparently we couldn't live our lives without it at the time. And if I asked you to go and find it now, if the worst happened and you had to use it in a hurry, would you know where to find it on your phone? You see, there's so much on our phones that we just don't use. 
or don't utilize. At the Samsung event last, well, a couple of weeks ago, they were lent heavily into AI, as you know. There was all sorts of different things they came up with. There was chat assist, live translate, and trans transcript assist. There was also something called message assist. This was, I found this one really amusing. The idea behind it, if you haven't caught up with it, is that you write a text, AI comes in, or a message, AI comes along and puts a, a tone to it for you. So it can be playful, it can be polite, it can be chatty. There's even a, there's even a Shakespearean setting in there. It, have we really got to the point that we can't write a message to our presumably family and friends without AI's help? Live translate, okay, maybe I don't speak to enough colleagues overseas, but that's not going to affect my life. Do any of these features, any of the features that I've just mentioned, are any of those features big enough and important enough in your life to make you think, you know what, yeah, I actually really do need to change phones. I said about the cameras. We, we play with the cameras. Most of the time, if I'm honest with you, most of the time when I get my phone out, it's just taking snapshots. It could be for a reminder of a shop that I've seen I want their telephone number. It could just be my cat playing at home. Most of the time, they are just snapshots. Yes, of course, from time to time in here, in this controlled environment for what I do, I will go to all the pro menus and try and pull the very best out of the phone to show you what the camera can do. But when was the last time, honestly, you spent time really framing up a shot and going through all the different menus to try and get the best, the perfect shot out of everything that's offered to you? Talking about features that are on these phones, if, if you're an iPhone user and I said to you, go and shoot me a long exposure shot now, would you know how to? Now that's not a fancy feature at all, it's been there for years, and yet we, we forget it's there, we forget how to use it, and that's the point, there's so many features being thrown at us every year by the big three trying to convince us we need these features in our life, but we really don't, and there's so many there, I am sure we forget they're there. Samsung at their event, again, coming back to Unpacked, they showed this new feature for slow-mo where they'd actually put frames into a video which wasn't shot in slow-mo, there was never frames there, they will slow it down, I think, to 120p. Very, very clever. And at the event, it sounds fantastic, but our lives, our real lives, sadly, are not as interesting as an event. Most of the time, we use our phones for fairly basic tasks. So I've told you how I use my phone, how do you use your phone? These phones now are all becoming very, very similar. Again, if you look at the iPhone 15 Pro Max to the S24 Ultra, both have got 120 hertz screens, both have got titanium rails now. The displays on all of these phones, displays are good, the processors are frightening fast, we never really touch the size, and the batteries are good enough to get us through the day. There's very little to separate any of these phones out now, and that's why they're leaning so heavily into trying to cram these new features onto the phone and make us believe that we need them. But do we? Do we really need the features that they're pushing at us? As I said, sadly, our lives aren't events. They are pretty mundane. And also we're creatures of habit. We use our phones pretty much for the same thing day after day after day. But as I say, I'd love, to, I'd love your thoughts on whether you think phones are becoming too confusing, too bloated, too feature heavy, and what it is that makes you decide it's time to change your phone. Maybe you're on a carrier deal. Maybe it's as simple as that. You get to the end of your two-year contract, and that's when you change phones. But if there was a sing can you tell me of a single time you heard a feature that you had to have that made you change phone? USB-C on the iPhone, that wasn't it for me. It was useful, it was handy, and certainly one record on the phone using it to plug in an external SSD is fantastic, but day to day, it makes no difference to me. These phones are supposed to be there to make our lives better, not more complicated. And don't forget, these events are all about getting you to part with your money. I'd love your thoughts, Nick. You were great last time. Get involved. I promise I will answer all of your comments. Let's have another week-long discussion about what it is that makes you decide it's time to swap phones. And if you think phones are now just too feature heavy, and maybe you're going to go away and look now and try and find some of the features hidden away on your phone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little conversation. I just wanted to have a, a proper grown up, relaxed conversation with you and understand, am I the odd one out? Or have I just stumbled across the elephant in the room? Don't forget, if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this video, subscribing really does help. Turn on those notifications and 
I'll be back next week. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.